You can very easily populate charts using JavaScript within Application Craft. Uh, so here, for instance, we've got a pie chart, and below it, a multi-series column chart. And uh, well, let's just see that in action. I'm going to drag up this window here. And if I click on mini, mini dashboard, customers by country, there you can see our pie chart, and underneath it, the multi-series number chart. Um, you can also populate these with uh, the integration capability. So through the um, UI, let's just click on this chart, we've got this data section. That lets you put in data directly from databases, uh, but that'll be covered in a later section in the Learning Center called Integration. So take a look there, it's also quite important. So how do we populate this uh, using JavaScript? Well, let me go across into code mode, and I'll just control D across there. And all of that is done using this uh, bit of code here. And we've actually set up an app event. So on App Started, when the app starts, we're going to call the get view data um, API method. Above we specify what fields we want to fetch from our data source, any grouping, so group by if you like in SQL terminology, ordering, you can also do filtering, so in the, uh, the one below we're doing filtering. So you set up arrays here of application craft expressions, and then we call the get view data, uh, read up about this in detail in the user guide. Uh, here we're specifying the data view name. Then we specify the fields array we've set up up here. Here's our callback function. And lower down we have, that would be the filter one if we were using a filter, the group and the order by. So inside our um, callback function here, what we're doing, there are different ways to handle it, but uh, the principle's the same in each case. We're setting up an empty array here and I'm looping through the returned data array. Uh, I'm leaving out the first or the zeroth uh, element because that just contains the, uh, the, like a header row, in fact the expression, the field order that's been returned. Uh, so I'm starting off at uh, index one and I'm then pushing on to this new, new array, uh, the new element where I've got my label. And this is important, you need to specify uh, an object which consists of label, and that's being mapped to the zeroth field in the return data. And then the next is data. So you need to use the key names label and data. So we cycle through um, all of, in this case, all of the countries that uh, our customers um, exist in. And then finally, we use the set data command. We set the data of our widget, the, the, the chart widget, in this case called Flot Country. And this is the series name. We've only got one series. And there's the chart array that we created. The second one, just below it, does exactly the same thing, except this is actually creating a multi-series array. Um, and so what I'm doing now is same thing, specifying my fields. I'm getting here, you can see there's an actual expression with a function. So the year of the order date, the short month name, and then finally a count. So these all directly uh, relate to SQL operations. So the select statement effectively, that first one. Here's the grouping. We're grouping by the year and then the month of the order date. Providing the order, we're ordering by year and then month. And then finally, the filter. I'm just interested in years 2003 and 2004. So I'm kind of hard coding these years. And next, we are doing the same thing as we did above, which is to fetch the data. Now, for multi-series data, um, you need to either fetch each individual series with its own get view data call. Or in this case, I just pulled in two years worth in one call. And then I actually use this code in here to split it up into two individual series, year one and year two. And then I do the same thing. Here you can see the structure of the object. It's exactly the same as above. It's just got two elements in it. So I've got a given a series name 2003, 2004. So uh, check that out in the user guide. Uh, there's a link to it from the Learning Center page that uh, you clicked on to get to this video. 
but hopefully that explains the principles of populating charts from JavaScript.